Miigwech, hi, hi. Thank you, Pam. Tansay Bojo. Um, I got my smudge. I've just lit um, some sage here for myself to smudge myself and my drum. To start us off in a good way, um, this is also for anyone here who doesn't have access to a way to kind of cleanse their spirit and help them to kind of start out without all that excess pain. We can kind of release some of that into the smoke um, and start in a with a good mind and uh, basically seeing things in a good way, hearing things in a good way, and speaking things in a good way too. And being able to receive and release and flow whatever you need to as well. And uh, so I'm going to start with a welcome song. Um, that's my way of doing an opening prayer. And the song I want to share um, is kind of related to the breakout session actually that I'm giving later because our breath is so, so, so important. So um, back with my son, um, Quinn, died in uh, January 2016. And sometime that year, my, my friend took me to, to a powwow and she went and uh, showed me this man that she wanted me to, to be introduced to. And then I saw that he had a book called When My Son Died. And uh, his name is Ken Pitawanaquit, an indigenous author. And, uh, and so when I, when I saw that, um, I went and talked to him. We had a conversation. It was really um, helpful and supportive. And he put his hand up like this in front of me and said, breathe. He said, you're not breathing. And I'm a singer. I have to breathe <laughs> a lot, <laughs> big breaths. And, uh, you know, and I was walking around this powwow without breathing. I was tight, like barely, barely breathing. And I didn't realize at that time that grief can literally take your breath away. Um, and also it can cause you to kind of hold on to it. Um, it can cause dysregulated breathing. So um, I needed a song for my album to remind me to breathe. Because after my son died, what I decided to do was create an album in his memory. And uh, my son was a musician. He was a rap artist, rap, rap and trap artist and producer. And, you know, he had just come full circle to um, with so many things and, and gone to university for music production and was really f uh, finding his way after having a bit of a struggle in his, um, in his life. And so uh, I was really happy for him and excited about that. And, uh, and it, was, uh, it was just beautiful. But yeah, when he was taken, it was like everything that he had just achieved was taken with him. But we still have his music and... Um, and, you know, music has been, runs through my family, on my father's side, on my indigenous side. And, and so, you know, I carry, I carry him with me with these songs. And especially these ones that, that went on my Picking Up the Pieces album. So Breath of Life is the welcome song I want to share. And uh, before I do that, I just want to say that I'm grateful to be coming to you from Dashkan Zibing is the Ojibwe word for it. For it, it means Antler River. Um, it's London, Ontario, colonial, colonially known as, and this is the lands of the Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee, Wendat, and Attawandaran peoples. And uh, I, I say thank you and miigwech hi hi. Thank you for to all those ancestors that stayed behind to to help us and the ones who uh, who come from time to time. And they do if we ask them, if we need them, they come, they help us. So. Um, Breath of Life was, I think, the last song I put on the album. And when you hear me, you're going to hear me breathe. And you don't need to take a giant breath like I do because <laughs> I'm singing. But when you hear me breathe, it's a reminder for you to make sure that you're breathing. Just And mostly what we do when we're in sort of anxiety or panic or grief or trauma is we end up breathing way up here, like way up, not even in our heart center, but above that even. And then that takes us into what I call anxiety land which is all this stuff up here about anything bad that's happened, feeling bad about yourself, and any anxiety that all lives up there. But if you breathe into your belly, it brings you home to your spirit and to your body. So try to do your best to breathe into your belly when you hear me 
breathe when I'm singing this. See if you can feel your feet underneath you, or if you're lying down watching this, feel the surface underneath you, getting connected to Mother Earth, getting grounded, getting into our bodies is a real trick when you have this kind of a loss. So just, um, it helps us to access our, what I like to call your inner resources when you do that, whereas you maybe not know what to say or what to do if you're up in anxiety land. But if you come down and breathe into your belly, you have access to what to say and what to do, what you need, and how your body can help you. So, um, so yeah, with, um, with what's happened to me um, and, and to my son and to my daughter, my daughter's here, and uh, her name is Kylan. She, like, she likes to go by Kai now. Sometimes I forget. Um, but... They're 10 years apart, and my son was just um, 29 when, uh, when he was um, shot in Toronto downtown randomly. And, uh, yeah, and along with his friend as well and another friend who lived somehow, even though he also got shot. And, uh, and it was, um, I was in shock for about probably three months kind of lightened up around the third month 
and it's um, so it was 2016. It's been a while for me now, and I've gone through you know a lot of healing and a lot of gotten a lot of support. Um, one thing I want to say about Quinn, um, he had ADHD, and so uh, he would forget holidays and stuff like that, or be late or whatever. But you know, he he messaged me that December, December 2015. He just he messaged me and says, you know, what do you want for Christmas? So I um, I knew he wasn't like, I'm all spiritual. He's not, <laughs> even though he carried a lot of gifts, right? And uh, and he, so he asked me, and I sent him a picture of a Himalayan salt lamp because I knew he wouldn't know what that meant. <laughs> so I sent him a picture of that. And, uh, you know, Christmas came and went, no, no gift. But I, I knew, I just knew Quinn. It wasn't because he didn't love me, didn't care. It's just the way that his ADHD was in the way that he was. And, and then, so I didn't know, you know, if he got me anything, but uh, months later, um, and I can't remember how many, my, uh, my friend and I were able to go and get his car from the impound. And when we went to get his car, we didn't know that we would find that Himalayan salt lamp in the trunk of his car. So I still um, received my Christmas gift. <laughs> and, um, and here's the thing, it was such a huge, huge gift that I found out later on because as soon as I plugged that thing in here, it started to flash. And, and when my son shows up, the lights flash. That's what he does. When we went to see him before anything happened to him, we were uh, you know, at the morgue, such a creepy thing to say, but that's where we were. And all of the lights were flashing in the room. We went into the viewing room. The lights started flashing in there. Lights flashed again in the bathroom. I'm like, come on, dude, you really have to follow me in the bathroom though. <laughs> but he was there. You know, and he was letting us know that he was there. And he has flashed that thing. He has flashed that Himalayan salt lamp to the beat so that I know it's him. I cannot mistake it. He has shown up and created light out of nothing in the studio when we were recording this album. So our ancestors and those ones who we have lost are our ancestors now. They are with us. If we want, them, you know, we could just call on them, think about them. They're with us. So um, that's, that's very little comfort sometimes, but it, it is comfort, and I do feel him. Um, I'm a healer, so I do feel him in other ways, and I see him and, and connect with him a lot. <coughs> and I have um, you know songs that are dedicated to him. So um, to find my voice after all the shock, I tried a few things. And they weren't working. And usually, like, I, I love to sing. I was, I went to what I call your love to do and easy to do list. That's what I give to my clients when I'm working with them, like, to find what's your purpose and you know what do you love and to bring you up when you're down. And none of that stuff was working for me. Now, and I stare at Netflix and I couldn't even see anything or hear it. But I turned on some music and and uh, and my body just started to respond without my mind needing to be there. And that was what kind of broke the ice for me to kind of melt into my body again. And so, um, yeah, so it, this album was really important to do because of that, this music and just creating, creating songs and you know continuing to do that in his memory because Quinn was a musician, I'm a musician. My daughter is starting to be a musician, <laughs> like it just is in our blood and it is who we are. Medicine Songwoman, Mishkikinagamwen and Ikwes in Ojibwe and Muskiki Nikamo Huskweo in Cree. Um, that's my, my spirit name, that's who I am. And and it kind of does act as a title too because that's it's just the way that it works. I bring through song and it's always for healing. Um, so yeah, so I, once I was able to come back into my body, then I was able to really get um, even more support and kind of figure out what was my life going to be like now, right? Um, so I call my album Picking Up the Pieces, like now what pieces do I pick back up? <laughs> um, and which ones do I not want to pick up and, you know, when? So uh, so I, I started to pick up the pieces and 
And I knew that I wanted to go to the trial, but I knew it would also be very traumatic for me, right? Um, but I had to. I had to bear witness. I needed to be there for Quinn. And I kind of, there was that curiosity and wanting some kind of closure, even though I knew it wouldn't be really any closure at all, but something. And so uh, I did. And I called them the year, I, what I thought would be the year was 2018, so two years later. But um, delays after delays after delays, some of them cooked up by the lawyers. And finally, literally on my birthday is when they started the trial. Talk about trauma. <laughs> so um, those anniversary dates, those birthdays, those celebratory dates are all those um, for those of you who are, you know, if this is if this is very fresh for you. Those first ones are the hardest ones. And um, and, y you know, I, I kind of, I watch my calendar because I'm an entrepreneur. I'm always watching my calendar anyway, but I, I put in there just reminders sometimes so I remember to take care of myself, extra care of myself, you know, before those dates come up, like Mother's Day just passed. I know that that's not easy for many of us. Um, and so when that trial started, um, one of the things I did, well, two of the things I did that were a little different than you would expect, <coughs> than, and, and oh, a lot different probably, <laughs> um, was, uh, you know, I, I did my own, um, when I, you know, when we, we do the victim impact statement, and I know BC, uh, BCBH, that you, you all have a way to help people through that, and that is amazing, because I didn't have that support except for from the victim services people, and I was sh uh, kind of uh, shattered again when I when I got the the, the written wh like what I had written down for my impact statement couldn't use about half of it. So um, at that point I said, you know what? I want to sing it. I want to sing it, and then I'll read whatever left <laughs> leftovers you left me there. But I want to sing it, and so they took it to you know to request or you know unusual request, but I was able to sing it. And because there were no words in it, they couldn't say anything about it. <laughs> they couldn't do anything about it. And so I was able to sing. I said it was a cultural, it was a song for my cultural grief. And so uh, I sang a healing song in the courtroom. But the first thing I did was to hand over my grief to that man standing there, who sitting there, I should say, who, uh, who killed my son. And so um, after that, I also gave him healing and gave everybody in the room that healing. But mostly it was for me, right? It was just I needed to be able to take care of myself and do things in a good way, but be able to get the emotions out. And music is a really good way to get emotions out. <laughs> so, um, so the other thing I did was afterwards, at the end, I held, af I held my own press conference. The media are, you know, it is what it is sometimes and i i'm used to the media so i'm in a little bit of a different position than than many people who all of a sudden have this barrage of media coming at them and don't know what to do but what i did was i held my own press conferences and i had i had my or one conference at the end and i had my uh my friend hold off any press that i was not inviting because if you were not invited you were not coming that's it because there were media that were very respectful to me and my family, and there were ones who were very, very much not. And so I made sure those ones were not there. But the ones who honored my son and my family were, we were invited. And so um, there are things you can do. You can take back your power in certain ways, you know, like look for ways that you can take back your power. Because this thing leaves you feeling like you're punched in the stomach, right? It's not easy. And the whole journey is not easy, but we can all make it through. And uh, I know that um, the breakout sessions are gonna give you some help and, and BCBH is amazing at helping. There are other places for, if you're, if you're in Ontario, there's a Toronto Distress Center as well. Um, but you need to find that support and don't give up. There's a word in Cree, agamemek, don't give up. Persist, keep on going. So um, I'm gonna, sip some water and then I'm going to share a song called Grieve.
So, um, so this song called Grieve, um, this is a, it was kind of a heartbreaking song because I wanted to be able to share, um, I, wanna, I wanted to be able to share some, one of my son's um, little beats that he had made. It was like a little, uh, 15 seconds. It was the last thing he posted on his Instagram. But because of copyright issues, um, I wasn't able to use it. But my producer was able to kind of give that same vib vibration, the same feeling um, with whatever, with the music that he put in there. Uh, it, it feels like Quinn. And I know he was there because, like I said, <laughs> he was there flashing lights in the studio. So uh, so this song is, is, um, is going to make you, it might make you feel some things. And, you know, honor your tears. I like to call those medicine tears. No sorries for crying, you know. No, sor no apologies for, for tears because those are medicine for us. So I'm going to share grief. <coughs> and this is uh, one of the songs that is not a drum song. So you're going to hear my um, backing tracks that I have for my album. <coughs> So remember to breathe into your belly. And remember you are connected to Mother Earth. You're grounded. And let your body move if your body wants to move. Let your body lead you. Feel the love. Bring the tears, take your time, grieve, feel the love, Let the love. bring the tears, Let yourself. take your time. Grieve. This is my dedication to all of you who know the devastation. Of the life of a loved one taken, shot down, never to awaken, forever gone, senselessly silenced by unspeakable violence. All of us are left behind to cry. We're living in empty space and timeless time. Feel the love, bring the tears. Let yourself take your time. Always wondering when you're coming back Only to remember that day you were attacked No rhyme, no reason That day your heart stopped beating And now your life journey is completed Your spirit's free and I'm here dreaming Of a day when people stop killing it's time to start truly living the life we were given. I'll be singing from my spirit in your memory. Mochi Z Productions, it's you and me. Quinn Douglas Taylor, this is your song. You are my angel, I know your soul lives on. I'll be holding tight to the many memories. Even though sometimes the grief brings me to my knees, I won't stop the tears from falling. To honor you, I follow in my highest calling. Feel the love, the love. bring the tears. Let yourself take your time. Breathe. Feel the love, the love. bring the tears. Let yourself take your time. Breathe. I will never forget your big smile. Everybody talked about that at the murder trial. Your presence in our lives will never be erased. You're still with us and all around I see your face. All the rage and the emptiness underneath. I know sometimes it's impossible to believe that you can ever find any kind of peace. 
I know it's painful, but please let yourself grieve. Feel the love, bring the tears. Let yourself take your time. taking a nice big belly breath and I don't know where we're at it with time <laughs> if we have time I will sing one more song you have about eight more minutes perfect okay so I'm going to share with you the title track from the album to kind of lift our spirits but also it's about picking up the pieces right and like I was saying you don't have to pick them all up at once you know society is like come on move on no 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 no, no. Like we need to take our time, like I said in that song, to, to let ourselves grieve. And I know that there are different cultures here that and we have different ways of grieving and you get to honor that. You get to honor that and grieve in your own way. I can tell you from having three very traumatic losses in my life, they're all different. The grief is different every time, even you know, just with one person. So whatever's happening, yes, it's valid. So I had this vision of myself um, after the police left, actually. I was sitting on the couch, just stunned, and had this vision of my life just in pieces, shattered on the ground. And I felt like that, and you know, my as an entrepreneur, I was like, well, who am I now? I mean, my whole identity and everything was just sh shattered. What do I, what do, what do I do now? Um, and I mean, I couldn't sing. I couldn't, it was really hard to find my voice at that time. So um, the song Picking Up the Pieces is about that. Like I said, you don't have to pick them up all the time, all at once, but you also don't have to pick up all the ones that were there, that were part of your life before. I like, what, I, what I refer to my life as is before Quinn and then after Quinn. And so, um, life changes and you know there's going to be waves and waves and waves of grief and then it lightens up over time it's true but for me i feel like with this loss it will just be with me um, and the charge is not gone yet the charge of it is gone the emotional charge of it is gone from losing my parents many years ago um, 
I'm able to talk about this now at least, but, uh, and I teach and I, you know, I have my own program called Picking Up the Pieces. I help women to, to grieve and to hold space for themselves and, you know, and uh, music is how I do that. So let me share um, Picking Up the Pieces with you. I just got to, whoops, that's the wrong thing. Set up something here first and, um, and just again, breathing into your belly while, uh, while they sing. And, uh, and just letting yourself, remem reminding yourself that you're here, you're in your body, and your loved ones are going to want you to be okay. And not that that means bypassing grieving at all at all. But they are here for us. They're here for us. I, for I also forgot to mention that my, uh, that welcome song is to, is to call in our ancestors. It's call in. We have our whole council all around right now in our circle here. Picking up the pieces. Picking up the pieces of my life of my life picking up the pieces of my life of my life i don't know what to do to know what happened to the life i knew so i'm picking up the pieces of my life of my life so time to find myself a wondering Will I ever truly be free? So much struggle, so much grief. This isn't any way to be. Gotta find my way to me. Letting go is never easy. Pick it up the pieces of my life, of my life. Picking up the pieces of my life, of my life. I don't know what to do to know what happened to the life I knew. So I'm picking up the pieces of my life, of my life. Oh, I don't want to feel this pain. I want to learn to live again. To give up on me This will never be the same There's no way to explain But it's my life to reclaim Shattered into a million pieces When you were taken from me I had to find my way back home To my hopes and dreams It's not the same without you here but for you, I will live freely. I'm picking up the pieces, creating a new reality. Let your body move you. Happened to 
the life I knew. So I'm picking up the pieces of my life, of my life. Miigwech. Hi, hi. Thank you. Thank you to all um, for sharing, for listening here and, and uh, to BCBH too for having me. And uh, I'll be doing a breakout session in a little while, but let's hear our next beautiful speaker. Thank you so much, Brenda. That was amazing. And you truly exemplify voices of healing through homicide loss. I, I was literally in shivers, you know, feeling, feeling the music from across the country. And I know Quinn is with us as well. Thank you for sharing part of him with us as well. And I do want to just share my screen again here for people to see where they can follow you. Um, Brenda's website is medicinesongwoman.com. And then there is also some social media where you can follow her, Medicine Song Woman. Um, on Facebook, Instagram, MSW Creations, and TikTok, Medicine Song Woman. Um, or again, just go to her website for more information on Brenda and where you can find her, Medicine Song Woman. Thank you again, Brenda. And next, I would like to introduce you to Sarah Young. In 2019, Sarah's life changed as she knew it um, when she lost her mom and her dad to homicide. Since then, her and her family have been navigating the challenges of this loss. It's a journey that they never expected to take, and it's been incredibly tough on all of them. Although this loss has held her back in some ways, um, it still keeps her going, and she is a beacon of light and strength and navigates these challenges while raising two wonderful kids and a puppy in the Lower Mainland. And I would like to welcome you, Sarah. Thank you. Um, my name is Sarah. I have two kids, a 16 year old and a 19 year old. Um, and we have a new puppy. I do live in lower mainland. Um, I was I had a very close relationship with my mom and my dad. Um, all my life, I was very close to them. I was just that kid who told my mom everything and we were just inseparable and she was, I guess, my best friend. And so um, we talked every day. It was sort of, um, they lived in, my mom and dad lived in Penticton um, when they were murdered. Um, and I was down here in the lower mainland. So we would talk over text every day. And um the day they were shot, my mom and I had talked at around 6.30 that morning. Um, it was April the 15th, 2019. It was just a normal day. Uh, I was working from home. I was about to jump on a Zoom meeting and my phone rang. And that was sort of the end of the world as I knew it. Um, I could tell by my family member who was on the other end of the phone that's Somebody had died. He was he was just completely distraught. So I knew it was really bad. Um, and then I got the news that uh, there was a man with a gun in Penticton, and I uh, he didn't even have to say it was my mom and my dad. I just instinctively somehow knew. So the days that followed that were such a blur. Um, I'll never forget the feeling I felt. I obviously, I've never felt that way before when I got the news. It just literally brought me to the ground and I was on the ground for hours. Um, we traveled up to um, Kelowna. We met with um, our CMP. We had a meeting. There were four people killed that day, including my parents. So there was a meeting in Penticton at the convention center with other families. Um, it was just all, it was, I mean, I was in shock looking back on it now. It's been five years and I can say now I'm starting to um, be able to look at, look at what happened. I don't know that I can ever accept what happened, but I can sort of look at what happened and um, not be in a fog or trying to numb the pain. Um, 
after after that their house sat empty and so it was broken into there was like a series of little traumas that happened after they died um their house was broken into so somebody broke in and went through all their belongings um and stole from their house um my mom's will went missing we could never find my mom's will um there was one day where I had to go, I was the executor of their estate, so I was sort of in charge of handling their affairs, but I couldn't really handle anything. Um, I had to go to court to um, face the man who had shot them for the first time. I had to pick their ashes up from the funeral home, and I had to go to the police station to pick up the personal items that they were wearing when they were shot. And I think it was just at the time it was just too much for me to really comprehend. Um, and then a year and two months after they died, um, my only sibling who was an active addiction, she passed away as well. So it was a, it's been a kind of a crazy five years. Um, but I could hear in my mom's voice in my head and what she would say to me. And she would tell me that I had two kids to raise and I had to get on with it. And I know that she would want me to be happy. Um, I just know what she would want me to do. So I went to therapy. I was diagnosed with PTSD and complicated grief. Um, I wasn't, I could I still, it was a long time before I could sort of come out of the fog or the shock or whatever um, of what had happened. There was also sentencing in there. So we had to go to the Supreme Court while they sentenced him. Um, so that whole thing was really um, made me very anxious. I had to read a victim impact statement in the court, which um, it all just seemed surreal. It all just seemed like it was happening to somebody else. And the one person who I wanted to talk to wasn't there anymore. And that was just unbearable, really, for me. So. I did, you know, I sort of just muddled along and um, I had some therapy. I had therapy uh, with a psychologist who specializes in complicated grief and PTSD, um, numbing the pain with whatever that didn't work um, because it's always still there. You can't, there was no changing what had happened. It, it had happened and it was sort of like, how, how are you going to go on now with, with things? And it's been a process for me um, over the last five years. Uh, at the beginning, I couldn't even, um, I remember the night after uh, some people had gone to their house. I could never go back to their house. They were shot in their garage and I could never, um, I never did go back to their house. Uh, I had family that sort of took care of everything for me super grateful for that I just couldn't I just couldn't bring myself to to go there um I couldn't look at my mom's handwriting I couldn't I couldn't look at any of their things it was it was just really painful um so yeah it's just been recently that I've I've sort of been able to think you know that life five years ago, that person five years ago, me is gone and it's different now. And uh, like it was said before, how, how am I gonna pick up the pieces? What piece of, pieces am I picking up? I'm just a completely different person now. Um, so yeah, it's, 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 it's a process. Um, and it is, it's painful, but you know, I remember somebody saying to me, was our victim service uh, coordinator. She first said, you know, one day you're gonna look back and you won't remember how they died. Like the, the, the violent, um, senseless, violent, um, just, you know, could like these were two seniors, like 70 and 72, um, totally innocent. You won't look back at how, how they were killed. That day won't stick out in your mind and that has been true actually when i think about my mom now um whether i'm laughing about something she would find funny or whether i'm crying because you know i miss her little face um i don't so much think about the 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 violent end for them um so um so i have found that 
connection really for me and 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 being part of groups where people talk about their shared experience with homicide has been um has been huge and i was very adverse to it at first i just thought eh, i guess i was just so closed off i didn't i didn't want to share it i felt like nobody knew what you know i just felt like it, it, i was alone and nobody would understand but Connection really has been uh, key for me, um, just connecting with other people and hearing other people's stories and knowing I'm not alone and I, can, I can't change what happened. I can't make sense of it. it was senseless what happened, but, you know, it's sort of like looking at life now and, you know, what's your life going to look? Life goes on. Um, as painful as it is, sometimes it, it does go on and it's all about finding a way forward. Um, the grief will never go away, uh, um, but it's finding a way forward and making sense of it in some way that you can live your life and uh, carry on. So I think for me too, I they were just such special people really that... Um, I always thought, even from the beginning, even from when I was in a fog and I was in shock, and I just thought, I have to carry on, not just for my kids, but I have to honor these amazing people, these parents that I was like really, really, really blessed to, to have in my life. Some people don't have that um, relationship. Um, sorry. But I was really, really fortunate in my life. So... Um, yeah, so to try and find ways to honor them um, and to live a life uh, that they would be proud of me for because it's, you know, it's easy to lay in bed and, I don't know, drink or do it anything that will numb the pain, right? Um, it's harder to um, to look at it and to let yourself grieve and really face what's happened. And um, yeah, it's not easy. Some days are harder than others, but um, I have just, when I was thinking about what I was going to say today, connection was just this word that kept coming up for me because I have found that that's really what has made a significant difference. Even though I was averse to it at first is some um, connecting with other people and, I don't know how much time I have left. I feel like I sped through that. There's still about eight minutes. Oh, okay. Um, geez, I don't know what else to say. Um, well, I know you were talking about, you know, honoring your mom and dad. And mm -hmm. you being here is one way that you have honored them. Are there any other mm. rituals, traditions, any other ways that you'd like to share that you've honored them? Um, yeah, you know, it's funny because I, people, again, when it happened, people were, would tell me like, you need to find a way to honor them on their birthday or honor them at Christmas. And to be honest with you, I haven't really, um, like my mom was a huge Christmas lover and Christmases were always really special in, um, in our family. But I haven't quite, I try, well, I try because I, I, I still have Christmas and I still try to make it special for my kids like she did for me. And I do cook her turkey dinner um, because that was my favorite. So I guess in small little ways, um, there's nothing really grandiose that I've done. I, 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 um, I find myself laughing now at things that were... Um, things that were, you know, inside jokes between us or my da dad had a million funny sayings and I say them now and I laugh. Um, yeah, so there's a uh, there's like little ways that I, that I uh, honor them. Um, definitely trying to be a present parent and uh, really sort of be here for my kids. Um, that's been... Um, I, that wasn't always easy to do over the last five years. Um, but um, I've definitely um, come out of the, I don't know if it was shock or what, um, but sort of, I just 
landed on earth I feel like <laughs> I wasn't really on the planet for the first couple of years and so um, because I had such wonderful parents I really want to be that for my kids and have those same kind of relationships um, so yeah Thank you, Sarah. Uh, yeah. How about you tell us what was your favorite thing about your mom and your dad? They sound like amazing human beings and that you had such a wonderful relationship with them. Yeah, I really did. Um, I think that uh, it's going to make me emotional too, but I was always um, accepted. They, there was just this unconditional love and acceptance from them no matter, you know, what I, what mistakes I made or how stupid I, some, you know, how stupid I was being, whatever. Uh, they were there for me. It was unconditional um, love and support. And they were, um, I was just really lucky that way. Um, I think to have that, to, to grow up in a house where I felt heard and seen, um, accepted for who I was, loved. Um, and, you know, before I lost them, there were times when I really needed them in my life and they were always there for me. I was, I just, uh, if I went through anything hard, um, I always uh, had my parents and, I, and I'm like eternally grateful for that. Um, they were also, you know, funny people, warm, kind. I mean, um, yeah, I was really lucky. It's, uh, it's been a lot in the last five years, but. For sure. And you've done a lot of work to get to where you are. Um, I mm -hmm. know when speaking to you that you have, and I know you're going to share a little more about that in the breakout, mm -hmm. you know, your experience with the eight week group. Um, I'm wondering yes. if you wanted to share anything else, though, that has helped you. Obviously, your parents were a huge support for you while they were here. And that's one of the really sad parts about death, you know, that when we've got somebody that we rely on for support, yeah. when that's taken away, you know, how do we replace that? So what other types of supports have you relied on? Well, it's funny when, well, not funny, but when they first uh died um somebody said something about a victim service coordinator and i didn't even know what that was and i just rejected any sort of um i just rejected all of it because it was so foreign and i think i was just in shock and actually our victim service um coordinator um ended up being she's like one of the family she was a godsend she was um just this most amazing human, really, that we could have ever asked for at such a time. She was such a huge support. I, 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 I remember saying, you know, that day, April the 15th, I saw the absolute evil worst in humanity with what happened. But then following that, um, there's been so many gifts just in terms of seeing the best in humanity and seeing people like our victim service corner, I don't know if I can say her name, but um, she was just, she still is. I, she's just a wonderful human being. Just, um, and, and we have a very close family. Uh, my mom's brother uh, and my cousins are like sisters to me. So I was really lucky my family sort of um, rallied around me, but our, yeah, our victim service coordinator and, um, and just, um, just the the neighbors uh, in the neighborhood that day. Um, we had a celebration of life, um, and and they came. Uh, I don't. I didn't even know them, and they came just to pay their respects. Um, the the like the police, the RCMP, the 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 court. Everybody was really really empathetic and kind, and um, so to get through that initial sort of court appearances and um and sentencing and all of that craziness the, you know but you know now like I'm very lucky in my life to have family and friends who um who have just you know stepped in stepped up and really been there for me saved my life probably 
Yeah. Well, thank you, Sarah. It definitely sounds like that connection piece is a huge part of your healing and mm -hmm. you know, you continue that and you all will continue that in the breakout sessions as mm -hmm. well. Um, it grief, it, it never goes away, right? It's a lifelong journey and you mm -hmm. can go a few steps forward, sometimes a few steps back, but it's that perseverance that keeps you going. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for sharing just a, a small piece of your story with us. Thank you. And your mom and dad. Thank you.